are those who are not austere in life. These are people who do not perform tap austerities. What does it mean when a person is not austere? This is a person who is not ready to go through any difficulties in life in order to attain the Gnan wisdom. Such a person should not be given this Gnan wisdom. This is because he has no right to it. He does not yet have the qualifications to receive it. Some people say that we come to listen to the Gita, but only if we get a chance to sit on a seat, otherwise we won't come. If we don't get a, sit, a seat underneath a fan, then we'll go somewhere else. Has this person come from the Gita or for the fan? It is a choice. God says that you should not give this grand wisdom to such people. In reality, Sri Krishna has become very strict in this verse. The people who are not austere and the people who are not ready to tolerate difficulties should not be given this grand wisdom. The reason for this is that they will not be able to live this grand wisdom. The milk of a lioness only stays in a golden vessel. And if a vessel wishes to become a golden vessel, then Nigarshan Chetan Taptarani. The impurities of gold can only be removed by fire. One has to go through so many tests, and only then will it become a golden vessel. It does not become a golden vessel by itself. Therefore, the first category of people who do not have the right to receive this Gita Gran are those who are not austere in life. Therefore, while they have not gone through struggles and difficulties in order to attain this, then during that time they do not understand the value of this Gran wisdom. What happens when we perform top austerities? We value this Gran wisdom. If we attain something after difficulty, then we have a lot of value for it. If we get something easily, then we do not have a value for it. If we get something off the hard work, then we value a lot, and this is called tap austerity. If a person has gathered money having released many drops of sweat, then he values that money. Even if he uses it at the grocer's, then he thinks about it. But if his children have got a ready-made car, then they would not even think about spending £5,000. Why does this happen? It is because the father performed tap austerities. Top austerity is not about leaving the material world, wearing orange clothes, growing a beard and a moustache and a knot around one's head, chanting Ram, 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 Ram. With top austerity, you have to put in efforts for it. You have to strive for it. Then that which you get after that is valued by you. In the language of the villages, if one is hungry, then one will only get bliss in eating. But if one is not hungry, then they won't get bliss in eating. One should ask themselves whether they perform top austerities in life. One who performs top austerities attains the right to receive this Gnan wisdom because he understands its value. There was a Sufi fakir by the name of Junaid. He was a very playful fakir. A youth came to him and asked him to give him the supreme wisdom. You may know that Sufi fakirs wear long coats. Junaid pulled on out a rock from his pocket and gave it to him saying, Here, do one thing, go and find the value of this rock. The youth went with the rock and saw a grocer first. He went to him and asked him what the value of the rock was. The grocer said that, what will I do with this rock? The youth said, no, I wish to sell this. What can you give me in exchange for this? The shopkeeper told him that he would give him uh, 0.10 rupees because it may help him to do some weighing, otherwise it will be of no use to him. Before, grocers used to do this, and I do not know whether they still do this. When you go to buy potatoes, then they are weighed with a bag. Therefore, they first put the empty bag on the scales, and then they put the potatoes in the bag on the scales. The grocer said that it may help him with weighing the vegetables, otherwise it's of no use to him. The youth came back and told Junaid that the grocer was giving him 0.10 rupees for it. Junaid said, is that so? Now do this. Take this rock to the goldsmith shop across the road. Do not sell it, but just ask him how much they would give it for this. The youth went to the goldsmith and asked him what the value of the rock was. The goldsmith studied the rock closely and said he'll give a thousand rupees for it. The youth got excited because the grocer was saying 0.10 rupees, whereas the goldsmith was saying 1,000 rupees for the rock. He came back and said that the goldsmith is prepared to offer 1,000 rupees for it. Shall I give it to him? Junaid said, wait a little, do not be impatient. There are some diamond jewelers in some parts of this town. Go and ask them what the value of this is. Do not sell it. Go and ask the price. He went to the giant diamond jeweler and asked him for the value of the rock. The diamond jeweler looked at it using a magnifying glass and said, How can this person have this in his hands? He studied it properly using the magnifying glass and said that I'll give you a hundred thousand rupees for it. The youth did not even know what was happening. He thought half an hour ago, a grocer was saying he would only give 0.10 rupees for it. Fifteen minutes ago, the goldsmith was saying that he would only give a thousand rupees for it. But this diamond jeweler is offering a hundred thousand rupees for it. Where are 0.10 rupees and where are 100,000 rupees? He came running back and said, now you should sell it because this person is prepared to offer 100,000 rupees for it. Junaid said, leave it. If you are going to sell it, then why are you keeping it? You would have sold it long ago, but put it back into the pocket. The youth said that, then why did you make me run around so much? Junaid said that that is what it is. 
You absolutely do not recognize what this rock is. If it has come into your hands, then you would have it, had it thrown away. The grocer saw it from his perspective, the goldsmith saw it from his perspective, and the diamond jeweler saw it from his perspective. If a rock can have so many different values, then so can the supreme wisdom. Are you ready to perform austerities for this? Are you ready for it? That is why Shikusha says that a person who does not perform tap austerities and who does not know the value of this should not be given this gnan wisdom. He would waste it and there would be no benefit to others from what he does. This is the biggest difficulty of today's times. Gnan wisdom has gone into the hands of people who have not performed tap austerities for this gnan wisdom. And that is why empty people have proclaiming that they have gnan wisdom. Anyone is just coming out and they say that have this gnan wisdom. One cannot have gnan wisdom without top austerities. Without performing top austerities, people thought that if I do this, then it will be very good for us and we get a lot of fame and everything. They open up these fake schools. They say that there's no top austerities for them and that is why they do not have a conviction in what they do. The reasons why they were saying this, what they were saying, and the consequences that they wish to bring, so that they were saying all wrong. They say that if he does this, then why should I not do this? I also know how to do this. This does not benefit anyone. Sri Krishna perhaps knew this, and that is why he said that you should not give this grand wisdom to people who are not austere in life. Second, this grand wisdom should not be given to someone who has no devotion to him. What is a devotee? This is a person who has love, feelings and adoration in his heart for God, for God's scriptures, for God's thoughts and for God's activities. This is a devotee. If a person does not have love, feelings and shraddha, faith, then they should not be given this grand wisdom. He does not deserve it. Third, Sri Krishna says that one should not give this grand wisdom to a person who does not have the wish to hear it. If a person does not ask to listen to this, uh, then you should not give this grand wisdom to him. Can you give grand wisdom by holding the hands and the feet? Can you go to someone and tell them that, beware, if you try to go outside, I will lock you in the room. Now sit and listen to Gita. How can such a person listen to it? If a person has no wish to listen to it, then they should not be given this grand wisdom. If someone is not thirsty and you give them a glass of water then they wash it out of the sink in the same way the person that does not have a wish to listen to this gnan wisdom then if you give them the best gnan wisdom of all then it will make no difference to them many people time, people get sad and say that there are such good discourses on the Srimad Bhagavat and such nice holy discourses taking place but this person is coming here and going to sleep why are you getting sad? I did not get sad from it, the reason for this is that he does not have the wish to listen to it. Then you wake him up and tell him to listen to it. Is there any reason to say this? Yes, of course. If he's sleeping and it's affecting our ability to listen, then we should tell him to go outside by saying, at least stay awake and listen to this or get out. This is because you're sending wrong vibrations around you and you want to save yourselves from negative vibrations. Dharma, ethics and morality are all such things that you cannot get, give to anything, anyone by force. A person should have feelings in the heart and they should have this love that I do not want to do this. It is even the same with love. Can it happen through force? Bhakti devotion is love with God. Can one possibly make this compulsion by saying that you have to love him and beware if you do not? How can we do this? If a person does not have the qualifications to receive gnan wisdom and are given gnan wisdom, then that gnan wisdom will not be digested but it will erupt like energy. This gnan wisdom will become egotism. And lastly, it is said by God that this gnan wisdom should not be given to one who speaks ill of God or one who criticizes God. If a person does not care about this gnan wisdom, then you should not give him this wisdom. He does not deserve it. This is because if a person has no adoration or love towards the ultimate wisdom and the supreme wisdom and does not care about it, then do not waste your energy there. This is Sri Krishna's speech. A person who criticizes God has no right to receive this wisdom. The reason for this is that this person does not see this gnan wisdom for just gnan wisdom. He has some other motives. He has put on a disguise of wisdom and he has put up a, a board of wisdom but sitting underneath that very disguise and that very board he has other motives. Sri Krishna says it's better if you do not say it to him, some, uh, some, something to him here. This is because he has no adoration towards this. He does not care about it. He does not bother about it. If you give this grand wisdom to him, then he will not value it. Av nahir adar nahi, nahi nenan me neha, sadhu taha na jaye, bhale kanchan barse meha. If someone is not standing there to welcome you, and you're not getting respect there, and no feelings are being shown to you, for example, it's so nice that you've come, people are indifferent to you, and the other person is saying that he is wrong and that's why he's come, then good people, pure people, and straightforward people should not go to such a place or should stop going to such a place. Even if money and gold is being thrown at them because that wealth will give them turbulence. 
You should maintain your dignity while staying calm and be like a tortoise who withdraws his limbs at the sign of danger, just like as Sri Krishna said in the 58th verse of the second chapter of the Gita that Kurmo Angani Va Sarvasa. On every side as it was it draws its limbs. One should make efforts and that is one's own choice. Therefore you should not give this grand wisdom to those who speak ill of God. God said in this verse that one should not give this grand wisdom to four types of people. Those who have no tap austerities, those who do not perform bhakti devotion, and bhakti devotion includes everything such as adoration, love, shraddha, faith, and all of this. Those who have no wish to listen to this, and those who speak ill of God. If a person does not have any of these four faults, then you should give, you should not, uh, should, you should give this Gita Gran to them with delight, and should give this Gita Gran to them with enthusiasm. Verse 68, one of my favorite verses of the Gita. Yeah.